My partner Steph and I just finished an eight day hike of the Tour de Mont Blanc and we partnered with Decathlon to put together a set of gear that was both lightweight, affordable, comfortable and performed well on trail. Some of the gear like the down jacket has been my favorite for years, but then other pieces of gear, it's the first time Steph and I have ever used them and it kind of surprised us with how they performed well out on trail. Before we get into what packs we use as well as what we put inside them, I want to talk about some of the gear that we used in order to hike because it was very important on this trail. The Tour de Mont Blanc is kind of a unique trail, much different than the Canadian Rockies where I usually backpack. There's a lot of straight ups and then straight downs and for that reason trekking poles were essential while on the trail. Not only did it help us get up the mountain, but it also kind of helped us slow down while we we're going down the mountain and took a lot of load off of our joints like our knees and our hips. Steph used these aluminum poles from Decathlon. They worked really well, the MT500s. They're durable, lightweight, and just all around comfortable to use. I've been using them a couple times as well, and I like them a lot. Another piece of gear that I found essential was my Garmin Phoenix watch. So while the trail is really well marked on the Tour de Mont Blanc, there's a lot of other trails that go off of it and cross it and for that reason I found the watch really useful to load up a map for each day onto there and then follow the route and then if I came up to a fork in the road I was able to figure out exactly where I needed to go and it helped us avoid getting lost a couple times. Our footwear was also crucial on this trip. Steph and I both used Hoka Speed Goat shoes. They have a lot of cushion, a wider toe box and are just really comfortable shoes. I've been using them for years with hundreds of miles on them. This is the first really big trip that Steph used the Hoka Speed Goats on and she she attributes them to being actually able to finish the trail. We had some long days, a 30 kilometer day with almost 2,000 meters of elevation gain and without the Hocus Speed Goats, she probably would have not been able to make it through that day. Another critical item while you're on the Tour de Mont Blanc is sun protection. You're in the Alpine a lot, so if you get good weather, you're just having the sun beat down on you all day. And for that reason, I had a few different things that I brought with me in order to protect myself from the sun. First of all, I had sunscreen, but we'll get to that once we get into my pack. I also had sunglasses from Decathlon. These have really good coverage, so I was able to really protect my eyes. As well, I had long sleeve shirt and a long sleeve pants. And a lot of people ask me, aren't you really warm in your long sleeve shirt and pants? And to be honest, it is a little bit warmer, but they're very thin. This is a sun hoodie, so it's made for keeping the sun off of you, so it's very lightweight. And the hood is essential because it just keeps the sun off of your neck and your ears, as well as a lot of your face as well. That's all that sort of stuff that I wanted to talk about. Now let's talk about the pack because the packs were really interesting for both Steph and myself. So the packs that we used are the MT900 ultralight packs from Decathlon. And I was pretty skeptical about these packs for Steph and I using them on the Tour de Mont Blanc because they're brand new to Decathlon and brand new to market. And Decathlon hasn't really ever done a lightweight pack before. The MT900 weighs just over one kilogram. So it does fall into that lightweight category, but it kind of blew our minds while we're out on trail because it has a few different features that just make it really stand apart from a lot of other packs, especially for ones that are as affordable as this pack. First of all, it has water bottle pockets that are very easy to reach. It uses the method that both Osprey and Gregory use where it has a side opening. So while you can put stuff in through the top, you can also pull stuff out through the side and it makes it really easy to grab and put back your water bottles. And then if you're in an area where there's bears like I am in the Canadian Rockies, then you can also have really good access to your bear spray. Another feature that I really like with the pack is that it has a trampoline back. The trampoline back here helps keep the pack away from your back as well as keeps your back ventilated so you don't sweat quite as much as if it was just a foam pad against your back. The pack also carries weight really well. It has a good frame to it that transfers weight to your hips. So you can carry a lot of weight in here. I think Steph and I probably had about 30 to 35 pounds most of the time while out on trail and we are carrying that weight no problem even up some pretty steep terrain. Now let's dive into some of the items that I kept on the outside of my pack. And for a lot of the items that we're talking about today, Steph had basically the identical items. I'll have full gear list for both of us in the video description so you guys can go check those out. First up is sandals, and these are just foam sandals from Decathlon, and these were super useful for a couple different things. We stayed in a few different kinds of accommodations while we we're out on trail. The first one we stayed in was refugios, which are kind of like mountain hostels. So you have a hostel that's perched on top of a mountain, and a lot of the time you could have a shower at those hostels and it was really nice to have sandals for those showers because sometimes they're a little bit gross as well we camped a few nights while we we're out on trail and the sandals were just nice to have around camp so we didn't have to be wearing our stinky shoes on the front pouch here we stored a couple different things 
We have our jackets. So we both brought rain jackets, the FH500 ultralight rain jacket from Decathlon. These are awesome. They pack up super small. They're waterproof. They have tape seams. We only got to use them once because we essentially had perfect weather the entire trip. It rained for about 20 minutes and the jackets did keep us dry during that time. And I'm really excited to actually include these as part of my normal rotation for backpacking gear. And then Steph also had a wind jacket. So this is the FH500 wind jacket. A lot of the time when we're in the Alpine or we're getting up over a pass, it was super windy and would sometimes be a little bit chilly. As well as in the mornings, it was sometimes a little bit cold on trail. And Steph would throw on this wind jacket and she loved it. This is actually one of her favorite pieces of gear out on trail. Another item is a trowel. Decathlon doesn't really have any good lightweight trowel, so I brought the Bogler trowel, an aluminum trowel that just does the job really well. And a couple more items that I kept in the front pocket here. So this is the beat free filter. We only use this a couple of times. A lot of the time on trail, you have little spigots that put water out. You can fill up at the refugios or other spots along the trail. So it was really easy to get good clean water. Another item is a massage ball. So Steph carried this and this was essential for her to be able to finish the trail. She was having pretty bad Achilles problems while out there. And a physio told her that if she just rolled out her calf a few times a day, it would really help out on trail. And it did. She actually started feeling better over the course of the trip due to the rolling that she was doing. Switching around to the side pockets and the front pockets here. For a water bottle, I used a smart water bottle that I brought from home. Steph picked up a couple water bottles from the grocery store, but we just used those in order to fill up on water. In the hip belt pockets, I just kept snacks. That was essentially it. And then in the brain of the pack, I kept a bunch of different things as well. We brought a Flextail Tiny Pump X in order to inflate our sleeping pads when we're at camp. And then I brought my pink titanium spoon. Decathlon doesn't make pink titanium spoons yet, so I brought my own from home. And then I have a ditty bag here. So we just use Ziploc bags in order to keep all of our ditties. There's a bunch of important things in here though. First of all, wall chargers. There's a couple different kinds of wall chargers that you can buy. There's one that has kind of thicker uh, prongs on it and this is works really well in France. And then you have another one that I picked up in Italy that works in France, Italy, and Switzerland. It has slightly narrower prongs and then it has this piece that kind of sticks into the Switzerland plugs, plugs really well. So if you are gonna be picking up a plug, make sure it looks more like this one and not like this one. I also brought a standard wall charger from home just with USB-C port so I could charge my phone as well as my battery bank. I also have the headlamp in here from Decathlon. This is the HL100. It's a USB rechargeable headlamp. Not super lightweight, but very inexpensive and is waterproof and is gonna get the job done. I also brought my first aid kit from home, so stored that up there. And I think that's everything. Bar of sunscreen, just to put up over my nose. My nose was the only thing that's exposed and my hands as well with the long sleeve shirt and long sleeve pants. That's everything on the outside of the pack. Let's open it up and take a look at what's on the inside. And right at the top here, we have our cook system. So this is just a stainless steel pot from Decathlon. Worked really well for boiling water for both Steph and I. And inside here, we have a spoon that Steph used, just a little foldable spoon. Pretty good spoon, actually. I was pretty impressed with it. And then we have the stove. So this is a compact stove from Decathlon that looks very similar to the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe, as well as the Soto Windmaster. Slightly different design for the pot stays here, but it has that big lip that protects the flame from the wind, and that has a Pezo igniter. The Pezo igniter, what worked about 50% of the time for me, so not nearly as reliable as the Pocket Rocket Deluxe, and probably as reliable for me as the Soto Windmaster has been. This is a great little stove, boiled water very quickly, even when we were at those really high elevations. Next up, we have my clothing that's in here. Decathlon has some of the best clothing for hiking and backpacking out there. Most of the clothing that I use on a day-to-day -day basis is from Decathlon. Right at the top here, we have the Trek 100 down jacket, one of my favorite pieces of gear of all time. It's an affordable, lightweight, effective down jacket. If you're looking for a down jacket, probably don't look any further and just get the Trek 100. We have a buff, a merino wool hat, and then we also have a microfiber cloth here. And we use these when we were at the refugios or to dry off after showering. Really nice to have this because a shower after a long day of hiking, especially when it was as hot as it was when we were out there, is really nice. A couple more items that we brought with us that were just all around really nice. Merino wool t-shirt. Merino wool at Decathlon is very, very affordable. A fleece sweater here. At night, it gets really cold, especially at high elevation. So we need these extra layers while we are camping those couple nights at higher elevation. Some fleece pants. These are my favorite fleece pants ever. They're just very lightweight and very warm. And then some fleece gloves and merino wool socks. The next items that are in here are the tent that we used, as well as our sleep system. All of them kind of surprised us with how well they performed on trail. And I'll show you why once I get them set up. 
For our tent, we brought the 4 o'clock Trek 900. I was pretty worried about this tent. I had never seen it before, and I wasn't sure how it was going to perform, but it actually surprised me with how well it did. First of all, it was just roomy enough for our size regular and size wide pads. So that's 20 inch pad and a 25 inch pad. I brought the XPED Ultra 3R, a new pad to market. It performed pretty well. It kept me nice and toasty warm and was pretty comfortable as well. Seth brought the NeoAir X Lite. I was a little bit worried about this pad for her, but I wanted something that was gonna be lightweight and she actually found it really comfortable. And it's a very warm pad and that came in handy on the cold nights. Like I said, we were just able to fit both these pads inside the tent. The tent is tapered, so ideally you're gonna have tapered sleeping pads as well. But we had lots of room inside there. We we're bumping elbows a little bit because it is a two person tent. If you want something a little bit roomier, then go with the three person tent. A couple other features that I really like with the tent. First of all, it has this little floor in the vestibule here and that's really nice if it's raining or the ground's really wet you can put your pack and other gear on there and it's not going to get all soaking wet as well the tent has two vents at the head end here and they're nice big vents they have a little prop to get or to keep them open and we didn't really have any condensation issues with this tent and we did have some pretty moist mornings where there's a lot of condensation on the grass and the trees around us but not inside of the tent Steph and I use two different pillows as part of our sleep system. I use the Trekology 2.0 pillow. I find this pillow super comfortable and I really like there's a pad strap to lock it down on your sleeping pad. Steph used the Decathlon 4 Claw pillow. This pillow is really comfortable. It has really good baffling so it doesn't feel like you're sleeping on a balloon and it has a little bit of a foam topping on it and that makes it really comfortable as well. Steph loved this pillow and I think it's going to be your go-to pillow for most trips from now on. Another item part of our sleep system were sleeping bag liners. Well, these are good to add a little bit of warmth if it started getting cold overnight. What they're really used for were at the refugios. The refugios, they'd supply blankets and pillows, but they required sleeping bag liners, and I highly recommend you bring one because I don't think they wash their pillows and blankets very often. For our sleeping bags, we both used the 4 o'clock Trek 900 down sleeping bags. I went with the XL size and Steph went with the large size. We probably could have sized down and still been comfortable. I'm 5'10 and Steph's 5'4 on, on a good day. And we found those sizes to be roomy enough, but maybe a little bit big. The XL weighs just over a kilogram. So it is still a lightweight sleeping bag and is really warm. We got the zero degree comfort rated ones and we got down to close to freezing and we are toasty, toasty warm. I imagine that these are definitely accurate in their comfort rating. What's really cool about these sleeping bags is that they're part of Decathlon's undyed line. It's an initiative that Decathlon has in order to use less dyes as part of their manufacturing process. And what's really cool is I got to visit Decathlon's mountain headquarters at the base of the Tour de Mont Blanc in Chamonix where they design all of this kind of gear. It was a really cool experience. Decathlon is the largest outdoor retailer in the world, but their hiking and backpacking divisions kind of live in their own separate world in the mountains of France, where they design and test all of this gear. And it's really cool to see the passion of the designers, the people who work there. They're out testing this gear in the mountains every weekend. When I was there, they actually had no one in the office because they're all out on a three-day trip camping and backpacking. It was really cool to see. Go check out the trip video for the Tour de Mont Blanc, where Steph and I get challenged pretty hard while we're hiking the trail. Steph says that it was two of the hardest days that she's ever hiked or backpacked and I can agree it was really tough and I'm glad we got to finish it but it was a very close call at times.